You know, some of you, you're even watching this right now and you know, in just less than 10 months, your whole life looks completely different and you weren't expecting that, you weren't planning on that, you had no idea those changes were coming. I suppose the question is, did you change for the worse or did you change for the better? Because everyone changes, but not everyone improves. Successful people know how to change with the times. They don't get stuck in a rut, doing the same thing, the same way, year after year. They're constantly evaluating where they are, and they make adjustments so they can improve. We have to stay open for change. We can't get so set in our ways that we won't try anything new. This is why many people don't have any enthusiasm. There's no freshness in their life. Every time an opportunity comes for change, for promotion, because they're not used to it, they shrink back. They don't realize that's what's keeping them from going to the next level. My life changed, my mind changed, my habits changed, my discipline changed. I am not who I was. I want to know, is there anybody in here who can definitively say with evidence by looking at your behavior, not your clothes, that you are not who you are? I had a change in my heart. I had a change in my mind. I had a change in my behavior. When he, when he got to change me, I thought completely differently than I do today. You can see it in my walk. You can see it in my talk. You can see it in my behavior. People I used to run with, I don't run with anymore. Places I used to go, I don't go no more. I know I've been changed. I know I've been. But how many of you know that when you get tired, when you get fatigued, when you get desperate, you start lowering your standards pretty quick? Like, you ever woken up in the night mad thirsty? Dude, you make your way to the refrigerator, you open up that refrigerator, the light hits you like it's heaven. Because if you get thirsty enough, you'll drink anything. Some of us have been on the faith journey for a while and we have gotten tired on our journey. Yet when you start to get tired, it's a bad moment to make big decisions because you will lower your standards. Some of us in this room, we have settled for second best because we traded an eternal blessing for short-term gratification. In the coming days, don't be surprised if God brings new opportunities across your path. Some of you are going to be offered a position that you feel is over your head. Or maybe you single people, God's going to bring somebody new into your life. You'll be tempted at first to play it safe and think about all the reasons why you can't do it. You've been hurt in the past. You can't get into that new relationship. You're not qualified for that new position. But if you're going to experience God's best, you've got to be willing to take a risk. You can't get stuck thinking that it can only happen one way. When I know I need to change something, what I do is I change it. I've had people that listen to the podcast and they've reached out to me over the past few years and one of the main messages that they took and put into action was actually putting things into action. These are just normal people, but they're normal people that knew they needed to make a change and they decided they were going to make a change and then they made it. And that is what you can do too. If you have something to change, if you want to change something, change it. Change it now. You've been given the dignity of choice. You don't have to repeat this year the same as last year. You can tear up last year's plan, develop a new plan. Now here's the choice on being a human being, to be part of all we were meant to be, or to be all, to strive for all, or half, or some. The choice is up to you, to develop one skill or 10 skills. And this is all a matter of choice. And when someone says, no, you ought to learn four, you've got to resist all that, because this is personal dignity. And you don't want to destroy someone's dignity by doing all the odds, and then they feel reluctant to do it. Now we've got problems. This life that you're living is one long, big journey. And maybe you hit an obstacle on the way that slowed you down, or maybe put your goal on the back burner, but do not call yourself a quitter. 
You're already telling yourself that you're a quitter. You put that in your background and I don't want to see that happen to you because you matter too much. You are not a quitter. You are not someone who gave up. You are simply someone who may have not been ready to face some of the demons that are in your background. Who may have not been ready enough to say, you know what, I love myself enough this time, this time to believe myself enough to keep showing up for myself. What would you do with your life if you had it to live over? What is one value, one deep commitment from which you would never bulge? Are you proud of how you have been living your life? Have you explored your natural talents, your gifts by enthusiastically trying a variety of activities? Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of us have so much talent and abilities, we just put them back on the back burner, or just left them aside someplace. Never did anything with them, never brought them out here. What are you sitting on? What gifts are you sitting on? Have you resigned yourself to a life feeling that nothing can be done to change your future or your circumstances? Have you been afraid to try something different because you're afraid of how people will react to you or what they will think? Find something that you can look at your life that you say, hey, I know I've got a problem in this area, being late. I need to take care of that. Procrastinating. I need to deal with that. Creating an imbalance in my life where I'm spending more time looking at television or having social fun and not spending enough time working on me. See, most people spend more time working on their jobs than they spend working on themselves. And whatever we achieve in life, whatever we create, whatever we're able to manifest comes out of the human mind. So many times, guys, we get distracted by things that we either have no control of or matter nothing to our goals. I want to ask you guys tonight, just do a little favor, and I want you to write down the things that you focused on today that held you back from being the person that you want to be. Did you worry about the behavior of someone else, something that you got no control over? Or did you stress about something that hasn't even happened yet? Did you give yourself negative vibes because you're worried about something that you have a fear over? And I also want you to write down things that you focused on today that helped get you closer to the person that you want to be. Did you eat right? Did you exercise today? What are things that you focused on today that you know are gonna make you a better version of yourself so that you can show up stronger tomorrow than you did today? No other life form can do this. See, if you were a tree, you'd be stuck. As a tree, if you used up all the nourishment that was around you and you couldn't change location, see, you would die. But that's not true. Human beings can change location, go north, south, east, west, live here for a while, live somewhere else for a while. So that's a note to make. You can greatly alter the course of your life. Now here's the next note to make. Five years from now, you will arrive. The question is where? This is for mature people now. If you keep up your present disciplines and keep up the present pace that you're on, where will you be in five years? Boy, it's easy to say, hey, I haven't really thought about that. So now make this note. In five years, here's the probability you will either arrive at a well-designed destination or an undesigned destination. Well-designed or undesigned. And I promise you, five years from now, you, you really don't want to arrive at an undesigned destination. Because you may very well wind up wearing what you don't want to wear, driving what you don't want to drive, living where you don't want to live, maybe doing what you don't want to do. Simply because you didn't design a better destination so some of you are going to experience a breakthrough some of you are going to go back and look at your dreams and brush them off some of you are going to begin to look at yourself and say hey look here I know I have not done all that I can do whatever goal that you have in mind I want that to be a goal that will challenge you something that will make you stretch it was Osborne who said unless you attempt to do something beyond that which you've already mastered you will never grow what is it that you looked at at some point in time and you decided that you couldn't do it that you talk yourself out of it. Whatever it is, bring it back out there. How are you going to do it? That will come to you in due time. So you don't get in life what you want, ladies and gentlemen. You get in life what you are, not what you want. You see, the good news is that we can always become more by working to develop ourselves. So the first process of making this your decade, you've got to begin to take a look at your life and look at where are you right now? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What gives your life a sense of fulfillment, a sense of joy? What does a full, rich life mean to you? Happiness is a joy that most often comes as a result of positive activity. 
Like wealth, it too has a wide variety of meanings and interpretations. Happiness is both the joy of discovery and the joy of knowing. It is a result of an awareness of the full range of life, the color, the sound, the harmony. And it is the joy that comes from designing a life and practicing the fine art of living well. Happiness is being able to explore the offerings of life by perception, response, and enjoyment. Happiness is both receiving and sharing, reaping and bestowing. It is being able to feast on harmony as well as food, on ideas as well as bread. Happiness is freedom from the negative children of fear, such as worry, low self-esteem, envy, greed, anger, resentment, and so on. Happiness is an awareness and a grasp of the positive power of life and loving values. It is an order of thought, activity, and lifestyle. Happiness is values in balance. It is contact with people of substance. Happiness is contentment with the tasks of your life. It is thought inspired by, organized with, and rooted in your personal philosophy. Happiness is activity with purpose. It's love in practice. Happiness is both a grasp of the obvious as well as an awe of the mysterious. But for most people around us, happiness seems to be either something left behind or something yet to be discovered. Like all the good things in life, happiness is elusive by nature, but not impossible to capture. Three things we must do to make our dreams come true. Visualize our desire. Concentrate on our vision. Work to bring it into the actual. The implements necessary for this are inside of us, not outside. No matter what the accidents of birth or fortune, there is only one force by which we can fashion our life material. Mind. The bee and the snake draw material from the same plant. One transmutes it into deadly poison, the other into delicious honey. The power that changes the stuff into new substance is within the bee and the snake. Of two boys or two girls in the same wretched environment, one picks up an education, trains him or herself for place and power, while the other grows up a nobody. It is all in the boy or the girl. Each has similar material to work in. One transmutes it into gold, the other into lead. It's necessary that you seek out other people who think like you, who are growing, who have decided that they are not satisfied with where they are. See, I don't believe that the necessity that necessity is the mother invention of invention no necessity in my opinion is not the mother of invention refusing to accept things the way that they are is the mother of invention you decide i'm not going to settle for this this is not going to be it for my life i deserve more than this see that will stop making you do some stuff See, a lot of people go to work every day miserable and all they do is just talk about how miserable they are. But they don't do anything about it. 